Hello, my name is Beverly Gerdeman and I'm an entomologist with Washington State University located at Northwestern Washington Research and Extension Center in Mount Vernon. Today I'd like to talk about Alaska peony pests and their seasonality. Thrips are tiny slender pests that feed and damage peonies. Thrips are the primary pest of concern in Alaska peonies because they can vector plant viruses. Therefore, many countries will not allow infested flowers to be imported. Thrips have piercing sucking mouth parts made up of a single mandible. The red arrow is pointing to their mandible. On this slide, there are several different colors of adult thrips indicating different species. Thrips insert their eggs into peony tissue. The eggs are nearly invisible. The eggs hatch to a larval stage, then molt into a nymphal stage. These immature stages may be completely hidden among the peony petals and difficult to nearly impossible to find. Nymphs molt to a pre-pupa, then to a pupal stage. Some species pass through their entire life cycle on peony buds, while others may pupate in the soil. Thrips eggs are kidney shaped. I've found them inserted into the fleshiest portion of the petal, the inner curve near the base where they attach. The act of inserting an egg into the plant is called oviposition. Oviposition can result in a dark pink discoloration, particularly on light colored peonies. It indicates injury and it provides a clue to help locate their eggs. Eggs can hatch in four days, depending on the weather. Immature thrips pass through several stages before they become adults. The larval stage hatches from the egg. They are the smallest of the life stages and off-white in color. Nymphs molt from the larval stage and are typically bright yellow. Nymphs molt into bright yellow prepupae with wing pads or tiny developing wings. Finally, prepupae molt into pupae with distinctive swept back antennae. The immature life stages are indistinguishable between species. At first, peony buds are made up of tightly overlapping petals, making it impossible for a thrips to crawl inside. But as flower buds begin to soften and expand, thrips and matures can then move deeper into the buds. Once inside the buds, they are nearly impossible to control. Thrips also feed on pollen. Pollen boosts egg production in thrips, but host plant selection by thrips is initially not driven by presence of pollen. Thrips can first invade peony buds as early as stage one, long before pollen becomes available. Host preference by thrips is initially not influenced by flower color, since thrips can infest peony buds as early as stage one, before color is visible. Later, as the buds develop, Color may influence movement of thrips within the peony field. In this experiment, we placed sticky cards within blocks of various cultivars and counted thrips activity within each cultivar. Sadie Fisher, Festiva Maxima, and Festiva Powder Puff, all light colored peonies, exhibited the highest thrips activity. Thrips can damage peony flowers. Damage is caused when they insert their mandible into the peony tissue and suck the cell contents. This type of feeding can cause the petals to become distorted and buds may not be able to expand. Feeding can also fill cells with air causing a silvery appearance, particularly on dark colored petals and foliage. At the same time, they may transmit diseases, which include tomato spotted wilt virus and in patients necrotic spot virus. A good way to monitor for thrips and peony fills is to use yellow sticky cards attached to a wire or stapled to a stake and arranged along the field borders as soon as peonies begin to emerge. Check them weekly for the presence of thrips. Cards can be stored by placing them in clear Ziploc bags and labeled for a future reference. To actively survey for thrips infestations, tap flower buds against a white pan to dislodge the thrips and watch for the presence of small narrow thrips in the white pan. Collect them with a moistened fine artist brush and place into a small vial with a little bit of alcohol, labeled with a date, location, cultivar, and bud stage. Not all thrips are plant pests. Some, like the black banded thrips, are predatory. Predatory thrips immatures are not distinguishable 
from immatures of pest thrips. Thrips population vary from farm to farm. Farms in the Kenai peony growing region of Alaska tend to exhibit two peaks of activity, while peony farms in the Fairbanks growing region exhibit a shorter life cycle, usually a single generation. Here's a summary of information we've learned from thrips and Alaska peonies. Thrips migrate into peony fields in May, and host preference may be independent of color. The second peak in activity occurs in mid-July, coinciding with bud stages three and four. The highest number of thrips occurs in mid-July. Thrips feed on plant tissue and pollen, and pollen can boost egg laying, but pollen is not required. Later in the season, when thrips have established in the field, color and cultivar preference may influence field movement, but not initially. Wheat barrier can suppress thrips overwintering in the field, but does not eliminate them from the field. Ligus are a pest of peonies. These are plant bugs that feed on developing peony buds. There are multiple species that infest Alaska peonies, including Ligus punctatus and Ligus borealis. Ligus are members of the insect order Hemiptera. They possess piercing, sucking mouthparts. They can be identified by the presence of a light colored V on their backs. Ligus are easily observed with a naked eye, but are also easily disturbed and are fast flyers. Ligus damage can cause severe bud distortion and necrotic spots on leaf tissue. Ligus insert eggs into plant tissue. The eggs are elongate with a neck and usually are laid in groups. Oviposition is unsightly and easily recognized. Ligus usually exhibit a single generation in Alaska. Eggs may hatch in five to seven days. The nymphs are small and wingless. Adults return to weedy borders to overwinter in plant debris. Adults move into the peonies in summer and lay eggs in the buds and at the base of bracts. To monitor for ligus, use sticky cards placed on the borders when peonies begin to emerge. Check the sticky cards at seven day intervals and place used ones in Ziploc bags in a cool site for future reference. Ligus exhibit a single generation per year. Populations are higher in the Kenai Peninsula than for the Fairbanks growing region as evidenced by the differences in the Y axis scale. Begin monitoring for ligus in May. Place sticky cards on weedy borders to detect movement into fields. Visual monitoring can also be effective. Immature ligus only have vestigial wings and are unable to fly, but both immatures and adults can injure peonies. Control weeds adjacent to peony fields where they lay their eggs to help prevent spring movement in the fields when the weeds dry up. Treating weeds for ligus adults has not been very effective. Ligus prefer alfalfa, but will migrate into peonies when alfalfa is cut. Knowing when ligus is moving into peony fields will help time registered insecticide applications. Pests vary from farm to farm. They tend to follow general trends across the Alaska peony growing regions. In the Kenai, pests appear later and leave later, while at more northerly latitudes, pests appear earlier and leave earlier due to the compressed growing season.